Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, welcome back to Punk Rock Radar. Um, this is the first episode of our new incoming transmissions series we're going to do. Uh, interviews with exciting bands that are just putting out new music and things like that. So today we got on Bridge the Gap, who just released their new album, Secret Combinations, on uh, People of Punk Rock record Records. Wow, I can't talk, can I? Uh, People of Punk Rock Records. Uh, it was recorded at the Blasting Room with Bill Stevenson. Um, and we have Chad and Ryan from the band on today to talk to us about the album. So how's it going, guys? Great, dude. It's early, but we're stoked to be here with you. Doing awesome. <laughs> yeah, these guys are on Mountain Time. So they got up at the, the crack of dawn today to speak with us. Um, but yeah, we got we got a lot of pre-written questions for you guys um so first of all you guys used to be in a band called unfold um it sounds like ryan wasn't at in the band at the time of the album you guys put out uh being recorded um but you did release an album it was called breakaway uh so technically though this is your debut album it's not really a debut for in the literal sense. So uh, I got a review here. I want to read for you guys for breakaway from uh, <laughs> from our friends at interpunk.com. This is Damien from Tiverton, Rhode Island, wrote this review. Oh, shit. and uh, I'm going to have. Uh, well, we don't really have anywhere to put it up on the screen, but uh, it's in all caps. Uh, I'll just read part of it. Um, he says, uh, let me unfold this CD and break it down for you all who aren't punk rock at all. You don't own this full length melodic in your face, righteous display of dedication on an unknown underground label yet. You're stalling. I only buy the best and the price was just right for a full length treasure. Uh, so he, he goes on. It's like a it's like a run on sentence for like, you know, like 500 yeah. word paragraph. <laughs> And he gave it a four star rating. He didn't even give it a five, man. And then this uh, we got Scott. Scott gave it five stars, but he didn't really have much to say. So Scott wasn't as impassioned about it uh, as Damien, but he, he seemed to have a uh, higher praise for it. So what what, what can you guys tell us about uh, Unfold? Uh, I, I obviously I never heard of Unfold before, um, but you guys were around in like the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, so we are uh, we're from a, a town, a smallish town on the Utah Nevada border called St. George. It's an hour north of Vegas. So we grew up. That's where we grew up, and uh, it's like a sleepy Mormon village meets college town type environment. And uh, so, when if you'd want to go to shows or whatever, you'd have to you could either go to Vegas or drive north and go to Salt Lake. And Vegas was exceedingly closer. But uh, so we started a band in like I did anyway, in like 90, I think unfold was started in like 98. It was about when it started. And then the, that record that they were talking about on Interpunk, That's crazy. I didn't even know that existed, dude. Uh, we recorded that at stall number two. Now stall number two was the studio owned by Mark Theodore and the four Pennywise guys. All right. Fletcher Draggy, Randy, uh, Jim and uh, Byron. So they all co-owned this. It was a former part of the Total Access studio. And our bass player now, Sean Foster, all right, he had just gotten out of school from the Conservatory of Recording Arts and Sciences in Phoenix, Arizona, and they placed him. He was able to get an intern job there at stall number two. So he went and assisted on like a bunch of rad records. Deviates, Time is the, is the Distance, Strung Out, Element of Sonic Defiance, uh, Bueno, Nothing New for Trash Like You, and a few other things. And then he got us a sweetheart deal to record there as far as like, you know, what it would cost us to rent the space. But we only had five days to get the whole record done. So, you know, you get everything done and do vocals last. And that's what we did. And then like on the first take, I'm screaming, let's go from the beginning of the first song called Breakaway, the title track. And I lost my voice. Dude, like I blew out my voice because I had been like midnight oiling it all the way up to that point. And uh but we were out of time and this was like our last day. And so we had to make lemonade dude. And uh, so I hate listening to that record because my voice is like, I don't have it. As you can tell, I don't have like a super deep, rich voice. So like, I need all the character I can get when I sing and lose, losing your voice, like losing my voice like that, all that was gone. So it's just this like really thin 
like reedy ass vocal, which I have a hard time listening to, but still good memories recording there, dude. It was fun. Was there any thought to use the untold uh, uh, name for this album or was it always going to be a new band name? No, no. Unfold died. We we nice. put, I don't know, Unfold, it was... Uh, we, it was like, what was it when I joined? It was like right after that album yeah, was recorded. Yeah, it was like t- 2000. 2000. And then we ran to like... 04-ish? 05-ish? Yeah, 05. But we just, uh, I don't know, it was just en- enough. It's not like we uh, had bad relationships or anything. There was just enough bad juju that when when we I started demoing songs and putting things together and then Ryan and I we kept in touch and jamming and stuff and then Jeff I got him involved with the demo stuff for Bridge of Gap and then we it was never even a thought actually to call it unfold. Never even a thought because that was just that was then. This is something different. Even though it's all the same dudes, that's what's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the same kind of music and and stuff. It's just I don't know that for whatever reason we didn't really give that much thought. Yeah. So uh, I I will say that secret combinations obviously it's a lot more polished and well rounded than that that the unfold stuff I've listened to. Um, are all the songs on the record were they written specifically for this album or are they stuff that you've kind of had been like kicking around for the last like twenty years or so? Do you think? That's interesting. They they all have a very modern sound. Like it it sounds like like classic skate punk, but it's very. Um, 2023 skate punk you know like it's very modern sounding well it's like i have uh, i just never stop writing and so i'm always writing songs and and then ever since unfold died i never stopped writing and so i never learned how to read music and i learned how to play by ear so everything for me is like this weird uh combination of visual and audio learning and so when i write a song once I've written that song, I will not forget that song ever. And so I have like, I had like 60 or 70 songs. And I, I had early 2021, I started buying gear to home, to make a home studio just for fun, just for shits and gigs. And then I decided I'm going to start de- like <clears throat> recording these songs for fun. And I would show them to my bros. Hey, Ryan, check out this song. You know, hey, Jeff, check out this song. And then one day Jeff and I got together and he's like, dude, we should like do something with this shit. I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. Um, but it's all from songs. So what we did is I took those 67 songs. I literally demoed almost 67 songs. No, no lie. <laughs> just for fun, dude. I was just doing it for fun. There was no like, you know, uh, objective. And um, when we decided, no, let's do something. Let's let's create a project. Let's go record it somewhere, whatever. Uh, we took like 25 and then whittled it down to 14. Uh, we actually recorded 14 at the blasting room. And, um, so that, that song that didn't appear on the record, we'll, we'll put that out as like a single at some point later on down the road. That's cool. Um, the other thing, if you listen to the record, there's to what I got out of your question was, um, are any, are any of the songs maybe older or yeah, you know, current, yeah. right? Oh, there's yeah. like three songs or two. There's two songs two. on the record that are actually 20 years old. Unfold songs. So oh but cool. We repolished them <laughs> and and now they're bridge the gap. And yeah. they're slightly different songs. Yeah. We redid a couple little parts, but they're the same songs. White coat and bridges. Yeah. All right. We're, I, we're I was just gonna songs. ask. No, yeah. <laughs> What's that? I was just gonna ask which songs. I was curious. Oh, gonna yeah. be. Are they are they on the the band camp? The the unfold band camp? Okay, no. I was gonna say because I didn't see anything that oh, there's any overlap so, there. So. There's three songs. There's three. There's a release on that band camp that says unreleased demos. Uh huh. Those three songs have vocals. Well, the the recording session from the where those unreleased demos came from, we recorded 18 songs, and White Coat before it was ever called that and bridges before it was ever called that we tracked the music and then i just never got around to doing the vocals because the band died basically yeah and so we had those i had we had that music for literally i think we recorded those demos in 2001 yeah. so by the time we tracked them they were 21 year old songs that had never seen the light of day and then you know bill helped us polish especially uh 
white coat, you know, a yeah. couple of arrangement changes that we we did and so yeah, we're we're stoked. That's that's probably what he was asking. Good job. That, that's <laughs> cool. I got I got what I wanted out of that question. <laughs> okay. All right. So guys, let's dig in a little bit to uh secret combinations because Dylan and I, it's it's one of our favorites of the year so far. By far, we're both really enjoying the album. So we want to talk about specifically the song My Creation. You know, on a fundamentally skate punk album, what went into deciding to use My Creation, you know, one of the slower songs on the album as a single? Um, uh, as a single, okay. As um, the, the first single. Yeah. yeah, right. And the only one that really shows the band. I don't know. It was uh Bill uh, Bill liked that song. And it wasn't that Bill was saying, make this a single. That's but <laughs> like that was one of the songs he was really he he dug. And um, when we would show it to people who didn't know us from Adam, you know, when we would sh send it to labels or just people and we were just trying to get feedback, uh, that was the song that people would consistently mention. They're like, dude, that song's dope. Yeah. And it's kind of, uh, you know, it's like a 90s-esque skate punk, uh, mid-tempo anthem type song. And so we're like, yeah, let's let's go with that one because <clears throat> it's melodic. It's It's you know kind of heavy subject matter and uh the opening riff sounds like twist of cane from danzig <laughs> <laughs> did you think that it was uh, kind of risky at all considering skate punk fans are always about you know the, the fast like galloping you know like the no effects beat do you think it was you were taking a risk at all with like popular consensus no because because juan at the label um he he was like that he was one of the bigger proponents actually of my creation but like neither one of us are that into modern skate punk and that's nothing against modern skate punk like you guys probably know a lot more about like the bands in scene and we're learning more and more about it like um but we you know it's like we're just basically putting out the music that we kind of music we would want to hear and it's a little bit more to answer your question bro it's a little bit more 90s rooted than mm -hmm. like the Iron Maiden meets Wilhelm Scream version, of, <laughs> which I love. I dig it. I'm not saying that in any shade. Like I'm not saying, like I like I love so much of it. Um, but it really is a little bit more epithet rooted. Like take it back a little bit farther. Yeah, it's more about uh, songwriting. I feel like yes. Um, so that that rolls nicely into my next question that I got here. So. Um, obviously, your guys' influencers, uh, you, you wear them on your sleeve. They're very evident throughout the album. Some of the songs have like a harder edge. Um, I'm sure you, you obviously read my review. There's some have more of a Pennywise kind of feel. Um, others are more focused on melody and uh, the hook. Um, like a, I would compare most to No Use, uh, some strung out lag wagon stuff. Um, so how much is uh, everyone comparing you guys to all these bands? How much has that inflated your egos? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been around the block sure. enough to uh, it's very it's very uh, I mean, we're not going to lie. It's very gratifying to hear positive feedback on our art and, and people being stoked because it was hard as fuck, dude, to uh, make that record. It was fun, but it was really, really uh, we we were like we slept on how exacting and brutal it was going to be working with bill stevenson and I'm, i say that with like like just utter love and respect like he's he's got a standard that's very very high yeah and uh, we kind of slept on what it would take to meet that standard but we did in the end and it came out great but the feedback we've gotten dude it's crazy like being being compared to no use or tony sly or anything like that it's like what what universe are we living in right now? This is, <laughs> this is crazy. I think it's totally sick. <clears throat> I don't. I don't have an ego to inflate. <laughs> I think it's totally rad. Um, I love all the reviews, but um, I just try to focus on making more music. You know, I love that people are stoked, and I and I, I love all the good reviews, I, and I, it means a ton. But I just focus on trying to make more so that people can have more, <laughs> you know, and just polish what we have and get better. Yeah, yeah but all those bands are definitely influences. No use, okay. believe it or not, like getting compared to No Use is a little wild just because like who doesn't like No Use, right? Who, who doesn't love, if you're a fan of the 90s skate punk thing, 
who doesn't love no use? Like who doesn't dig that? But they were no use for a name has never been a top five for me. Like they're a band I I've, I've loved, but not like, they're not like one of my bands, dude. Like that if I had to go to desert Island, no use is probably, and you're saying like you can take three albums. It's probably not going to be no use. Probably won't be in that, that trio. Probably well, I think by, three. by the transitive property, just, you know, any band that's within that fat records uh, right. realm, like if you like one of them, you like, you kind of, you kind of, yeah. if you like lag wagon, you, you kind you like no use. Like, yeah, they, they all sure. have a very similar uh, vibe to their sound. I would say. Yeah, definitely. But there is a difference. I think in terms of the pulley strung out aspect of it, just because none of those, every, everyone bows down to Tony Sly and for dang good reason. Right. Right. We all know what a talented songwriter he was, but Jim Cherry doesn't get enough props like Jim yeah. Cherry. I think if you take, Brett Brett Gerowitz and and Greg Graffin and set them aside for the conversation. They don't count. Jim Cherry was actually the best songwriter of that whole scene, dude. That's my opinion. R.I.P. So I'm I'm gonna deviate a little from our uh, questions here because you touched on this briefly. I'm a big Desert Island Records guy. I love to ask people this. So you set me up for it. I, I wasn't gonna do it because I always do it. But let me hear if you had to pick two or three records each of Desert Island albums what would you bring <laughs> uh pennywise unknown road that's the magnum opus i think bad religion stranger than fiction right on. um you do your three or oh was go it ahead. three yeah you do three real oh. quick <laughs> i can't do three let's take turns okay okay, okay. <laughs> here's 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 my three all right i'll be very specific suffer bad religion pennywise unknown road Strung out, twisted by design. That would, that would be my like that. That, that would be my three desert island. I think suburban edges out twisted a little for me. Yeah, really? they're both they're both excellent though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think suburban teenage wasteland blues, dude. I gotta have that album. I just barely spun it on vinyl yesterday, and I forgot how freaking good it is. My man. <laughs> um, and then Stranger Than Fiction, and then probably About Time. And right on. Respectable. I yeah, I don't think anyone's gonna have any qualms with those. Those are all badass records. We we are not canceling Bridge the Gap today. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a question now about the recording process. I see you wearing the shirt. We touched on Bill a little bit, but like working with like someone who's you know thought of in such high revere, like a legend in the punk rock scene. What was it like recording with him? And like, what kind of inputs did he have on your songs? Especially when it comes to like drums and things like that. Was he like suggesting, oh, I want I want you to play this drum part like this or, you know, I'm, I have this kind of idea for a drum part. I'm, I'm curious about that, uh, Ryan. Well, I'll, let me set that up real quick. <clears throat> let me set that up because it was kind of a bummer because when we first when we scheduled the time with Bill, uh, you know, he's a touring musician, right? That he juggles blasting room around. And uh, he had just come back from a tour in, in uh, United Kingdom. And so he, we were buttoned right up against it. It was like he, he re returned home and then like on a Tuesday and we were going to be there on a Friday type thing. OK, so with that being said, on our way to the studio, the phone rings and he was basically he wasn't well. He picked something up along the way when he got home. He was hell sick. And uh, so the first three days, which we were tracking drums, no bill. We, we Bill couldn't be there. He was too sick. Uh and it was still around the. Uh, the uh, coof. I'm I'm gonna use a code word here so that if this gets put on YouTube, it doesn't get you know throttled. Yeah. But it, so we're everyone's still being very very cognizant of hey I'm sick I can't be around you and we're like cool. But it, it worked out because uh, he still got to be part of the drums toward the end. So I just wanted to set that up because he wasn't able to be there for all the drums. Colton Crone, who is a freaking badass badass. Uh, badass producer at the Blasting Room, kind of spearheaded the drums. But right. Yeah. So he was, Colton was with me the majority of the time. Like, um, what did I track drums? How long did it take? Was it three? It was halfway through Friday till the end of Monday night. So, okay. So, so three days. Three Bill days. was there like for two songs, basically. Yeah. Two or three tracks. On Monday. Yeah, on Monday. And um, so it was mostly Colton, which was probably better for me. So I wasn't so nervous <laughs> because Bill is one of my favorite drummers. This is probably a lot of people's favorite drummer um, and just well known. And, you know, he's just he's Bill. Um, so 
Um, mostly Colton. Colton's awesome. And as far as the input, Colton had great input. Um, mm -hmm. he, he had a couple drum parts. I'm not even going to say them. <laughs> But, but he was, dude, Bill would like, he was agonizing over it not being there because, so he would like, I was talking to him on the phone and texting all day, every day. He wasn't there the first couple of days. And he's like, he, he was like checking the temperature, like making sure I wasn't bummed or we weren't bummed that he wasn't there. You see the fucking muscle I got there? You guys see the yeah. fucking muscle I've got in the plastic room. <laughs> and by that point, we're like, yeah, dude, we see the muscle. Like this is yeah. legit. So, uh, can't say enough good about Colton or and bill but. but he did have some input on some, on some the last two songs you tracked yeah and it was awesome to have bill there it was it was epic um we have some video of it maybe we'll put it out someday yeah, <laughs> yeah. The studio diaries he yeah. did have ideas he said i think it should be i i'm hearing this you know and then we'd we'd come to like a middle ground and we'd kind of like go from there it was it was fun yeah i i imagine that kind of input would be invaluable and in you know, oh, awesome. crafting, crafting the songs. Yeah. Dude, you're pinching yourself the whole time. Like, yeah, that's one thing yeah. about being at the blast room. Like for us kids from the nineties, like you first walk in and the whole, the, you know, it's like, if you've ever seen filmage, when it shows bill walk into the blast room for the first time and he walks that long hall and it just kind of shows him from the back, the camera, the, it's a narrow hall long. And then you get to the different studio rooms. Well, those walls are just covered with all the different history from, you know, all the bands that recorded there and little records and this and that signed this and that, you know, the messages to the, and you're just like the whole time you're there for us. Anyway, the novelty never wore off. Like it, the wow. whole time we were like feeling like we were at Disneyland or some shit. It was rad, <laughs> but definitely like better. Christmas, like every morning, punk rock <laughs> Disneyland. You just wake up and see stuff on the walls and it makes you happy. Yeah. But <laughs> Bill didn't have, as far as like arrangements and stuff, he only had, I think on three songs, a couple slight arrangement suggestions. And his thing is when he produces a record, he's so if you're a four man band or whatever, four person band, he'll say, look, while you're here, I'm, I have equal voice. So like if now we're a five man band, I don't, I'm not a dictator. I don't decide, but my voice is an equal share of your voice, your voice, your voice, etc. And so, but still when it's bill and he goes, I think you should go here. instead <laughs> of E you should resolve on B you're going. Yeah, that sounds good. Let, the the oh, implication yeah, that, that is there. <laughs> yeah. People don't realize that, like, people think he, uh, I think a lot of people assume he's just, like, a drummer and maybe an engineer, but he's yeah, not, dude. Not. Like, he is a songwriting, multi-instrumental, uh, creative dynamo, like a savant and level. And, yeah, and a singer, like, really good singer. But, uh, yeah, his, vo his vocals are on the album in a few spots. A few spots, but anyway, Bill Bill's the man, dude. We learned so much from him; it was crazy. We can't wait to go back. <clears throat> all right, awesome, man. That's great. Um, all right, sw switching gears a little bit from the recording process. Now let's talk about the process of putting the record out. So obviously, people of punk rock um, put the record out. Is this the first time uh, music you guys have recorded has been released on vinyl? I mean, CDs are cool and all, but. How how crazy is it to see like fucking clowns like me on Instagram posting <laughs> pictures of their, their record that they got in the mail spinning it? Yeah, dude, it's rad. It's amazing. It, it, yeah, it is the first time we've ever uh, published vinyl. Uh, and it has been really cool, man, to see people, you know, whether it's knowing that the sales are happening, but then people sending in, you know, the record showing pictures of the album. Yes. Just They're like that. You got the red nice. one. That's the dopest one, I think. Yeah. Uh, but it's been very, very cool, dude. Like we are very stoked um, to see all the all the people digging the tunes, like whether it's yeah. Spotify or or the hard, yeah, dude, the actual LP. So nice, very, very, very gratifying. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, you guys have it on your uh, your U.S. web store now too, so it's very, very affordable to get in the United States. It was only. Two dollars after shipping that's cheaper than most bands are uh charging for just the record before shipping so right definitely pick this record up if you're in the u.s uh link to their web store will be in the video description thank so you ne next one here so like recording is one thing but after like a long you know gap as playing in a band i feel like playing shows is a whole nother monster and Dylan pointed out to me that you guys have a record release show, Salt Lake City, 
April 14th. So is this the first live show you guys are playing to a crowd since the unfold days? It is. Yep. Oh, damn. <laughs> it is. Yes. It's, uh, yeah. And we might sneak an unfold song in. We might. Uh, but yeah, it is April 14th. Salt Lake City, it's kind of a middle point for us where everybody lives. Some of us live in Colorado. Some of us live in Utah. So it's a good middle point um, to come together and play the show. And uh, then we're in the process of basically sketching out with, you know, because we're all dads now and we all have uh, jobs and careers and stuff like that. But we are in the process of uh, putting together a plan to do some not necessarily touring. No, no, none of us are trying to get in a van again for a month. And yeah. I mean, that to me sounds like yeah. hell, dude. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we did that back in the day, but we don't, but you know, like a week here, go to Canada for a week, uh, you know, go to Europe for two weeks or, you know, go play a few shows with our friend bands and stuff like in California or whatever, those type of things we're going to do. Um, we're uh, just little early in the process to be able to announce anything, but we have some things that we are going to be able to announce here pretty soon. Awesome. Um, so you, you kind of answered my last two questions here already, <laughs> but, um, but, uh, what do you think the set list is going to look like for you guys? So are you just going to play the album straight through? Are you going to mix it up? Maybe some covers or something, or what's that going to look like? What can people expect? No covers, no covers, but we're going to play the whole record. <laughs> Uh, nice. Not necessarily in sequence, uh-huh. uh, because dynamically, I don't think it's, I think it's, uh, from it flows live... well as an album, but yeah. maybe yeah, not we... as a live show live show. We're going to mix it up a little bit. And then, uh, we're flirting with throwing an unfold song in there. Cause there will be fans from unfold because we're playing in Utah. There will be people that'll, I'm sure, uh, drive up from St. George or people that now live in Salt Lake. That'll come out to it just and be stoked to hear one unfold song uh but uh yeah you kind of i, I want to touch on this real quick I, it's not something i plan to ask but who uh who sequenced the album was it a collaborative effort or did did someone bill or um someone at the blasting room decide on that because i think it's re very well sequenced i'm i'm a very big fan of production and album sequencing and i think it's done very well on secret combinations well, what's funny is we asked, I asked Bill for his input to sequence the record. And I think I texted him like, as if I recall, right. I think I texted him like, as he was about to hop on a plane for Europe or something. He's like, yeah, dude, I'll get back to you. And then within a day or two, I didn't hear back from him, uh, which is, you know, it is what it is. Like that sometimes happens when you're on the road and you're playing, you're dealing with jet lag and you're, you're playing descendant sold out descendant show, uh, every single night. <laughs> so we, uh, we sequenced it ourselves. Basically we, we hashed it out amongst ourselves. What we thought, I mean, secret combinations, the song was always going to open the record. So from there it was, and whippersnapper was always going to close it. So it was just a matter of figuring out, Bridge the gap between. Yeah, bridging the gap <laughs> between, go. baby. <laughs> so where did the yeah. name uh, Secret Combinations come from? Any meaning behind the album name? There's definitely meaning behind it. Where it came from, I don't know. But like Secret Combinations is, uh, you know, it's kind of a 19th, early 20th century way of saying conspiracy. That's how they would call a conspiracy back then a combination or a secret combination. Um and so, you know, it's just kind of that the motif of that song, the subject matter is just kind of talking about how, um, you know, all these things that divide us um, in reality, they're it's like uh, one man's opinion, OK, or one band's opinion, let's just say uh, that all the things that divide us, you know, they're they're made to divide us so that, you know, powers that be establishment the secret combinations can carry on with what they're trying to do while everyone fights amongst themselves. So that's really all, all that means is conspiracies, cons secret combinations. Nice. Man's not meant to be alone with iniquity. It's a matter of time till he's coming apart.
So yeah, um, thank you to Chad and Ryan for joining us today. Uh, their new album, Secret Combinations, out now on People of Punk Rock Records. Uh, you can get it from the label's website in Canada. Uh, if you want to save on shipping in the U.S., you can get it from Bridge the Gaps merch store, which again will be linked in the video description. Um, it's an awesome record. I gave it a very favorable review, and it was definitely deserved. It's uh, This is going to be in both of our top tens, as John mentioned, uh, come year end. So uh, anything you guys want to say before we wrap up to the, the folks at home? Just want to say we appreciate both of you. Appreciate everyone uh, listening that has, uh, whether you've streamed Bridge of the Gap once, if you bought the vinyl or any, we really, really love and appreciate you guys. So uh, we value the opportunity even having these conversations for us is just so rad so big fans of course of what you guys do at dying scene punk rock radar just love what you do live yes just keeping it going yes yeah. defend hashtag defense skate punk dude that we love that because <laughs> punk rock punk rock you know it, it is what it is we love all forms of punk rock but skate punk needs to be defended it's the best of all of punk rock Hell in yeah. in our opinion. Our opinion. So, so you guys are gonna pull a, you know, that band Man Overboard with the defend pop punk shirt. So you got to make a defend skate punk shirt now. There you go. That would be oh. rad. <laughs> that'll 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 fund those. Uh, that'll fund the next record, the defend skate punk shirts. Yeah, there dude, we go. that's a good call. Good idea. <laughs> well, checks in the mail, big dog. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for talking to us today, guys. And uh, like I said, everyone check out uh, Bridge the Gaps debut album, Secret Combinations, out now on People of Punk Rock Records. It's fucking awesome. See you guys. Thanks, guys. All right.